Hi everybody, in part 2 of the EXS tutorial we are going to put the focus on the parameter window where you're gonna spend the most of your time. Logic 9 offers you now the opportunity to resize the plugin window. So let's make it big, to get a better view on what we are talking about. I open the caps lock keyboard and trigger some MIDI notes. When no instrument is loaded the EXS will play a sine wave. Let's make some party with the sine wave. On the left side we see the global parameters. Here you can set the velocity offset, the controller for hold, which is the sustain, and the X-fade is telling you about the zone crossfades. With voices you set the amount of voices that can be used. And use this place how much voices you use right now. Here you can set the voice behavior, and if it's set to poly, you can use the EXS voices polyphonic and that means more than one of a different pitch at the time. You see I hit one, two, three, four keys at the time, and the use displays it. If I change to monophonic, I can only use one voice at the time. You see I hit one, two, three, four and the use displays only one. Legato is a special mono behavior when notes are pressed. For quick demonstration, I raise the attack of envelope 2 so that we hear fade in when I press the note. In mono the voice behavior stays the same while I'm holding a key. In legato you don't hear the fade anymore. If you press unisono, the EXS will use 8 voices for a note to make it thicker. You see I press only one key and use this place 8. With previous and the next instrument you can step through your sounds, the edit button you know from the previous tutorial. And under options you have different options, look at the manual for this. This here is the pitch area. Here you can transpose, tune and fine tune the sound. Random will change the pitch randomly in the desired amount. This is cool to emulate analog drums and drum machines. Here you can set the amount for the pitch band. And here you can set a remote key to change the pitch. If I set it to C2 and press the A key, you see in the transport that I'm triggering the note C2. But we don't hear anything because the entire octave from C2 to B2 is used to set the pitch. If I keep the key key pressed, I can change the pitch with the notes of the pitch octave. When I release the K key, we don't hear anything again. And if I set remote off, the octave behaves normal and we hear sound. With glide you set the pitch time between two notes. I keep the A key pressed and hit the K key. And I raise the glide amount. The pitcher changes the glide behavior. Here we have the filter section. Turn it on. Move the cutoff. Move the resonance. Fed the sound, give some drive, play with the filter type. Play with the key adjustments. Go to the output section and play with the level amount.
With the key scale you can balance the output of the key range. Minus values make deep keys louder and plus values make high keys louder. Beneath we see the so-called modulation router area. And down here we see the modulation with its control parameter. We have three LFOs and two envelopes to modulate the sound. In the modulation router area we can route the modulation to nearly all parameters. We can suggest destination as the target. Here we decide which parameter we like to modulate. Let's choose pitch. And let's choose LFO1 as the source modulation. That means I'm gonna hit the pitch with the LFO1. If I hold a key and move the amount to the minus and plus limit, you hear how the pitch changes. If I reset the rate of LFO1, the pitch changes stop and you hear a clear sound. Let's raise the value again and change the waves to hear some differences. If we move the rate from the free side to the sync side, the LFO rate will be synchronized to the sequencer tempo. Let's set the rate to quarter notes and create a MIDI region with a long MIDI event. Loop the whole thing. Turn the metronome on and hit play. You hear the LFO in sync. With the envelope generator, you can set a delay or a decay for LFO1. Delay will delay the start of the modulation. And with decay you will set the end of the modulation. With VIA you can send the source through another modulation. Let's choose envelope 1. Hit play and make some adjustments. You can inverse the behavior. Bypass the modulation router. This were the basics of the EXS part 2. Now you got the idea how to tweak the sound with the modulation router. Thanks for watching. And yo, newbies and rookies, now you are ready for the UB noise flow. Watch the next video to get in touch with it.